can appreciate refined luxury, but it's not what we really want in a truck. What is form without function? What good is a Ram Rebel if it can't take you out to get the job done and then even farther out into the backwoods for a little adventure? Perry Mack, Four Wheel Drive Magazine. I'm here with Jared from Mopar Insiders and 5th Gen Rams. And we are driving the Ram Rebel. Yep. Crew um, cab, air suspension. 5.7 liter Hemi. And we're off road in the Callahan Valley in Whistler. Ram became its own brand in 2009, and in that time, sales have grown by 177% in NAFTA countries, Canada, Mexico, and the USA. Far greater growth than GM or Ford. In 2019, Ram eclipsed Chevy to become the second most popular pickup truck brand in North America. The Rebel is Ram's most capable half-ton off-road truck, and for most folks, it requires no aftermarket modifications to take them everywhere they need to go with everything they want to take. You can add an off-road package to other Ram 1500s, but you don't get the same degree of off-road capability as you do when you choose Rebel. Holding the truck up are Bilstein monotube dampeners. The rear gets external reservoir shocks. There's an optional four corner air suspension system. The drivetrain has an electronically actuated locking rear differential. The steel front bumper has a couple of tow hooks and the undercarriage has steel plate protection for the transfer case, steering, front suspension, full tank and the all pan. Nice. The truck comes standard in 4x4 with a shift on the fly transfer case, a crew cab, 5.7 liter V8 Hemi, cranking out 395 horsepower and 410 pound feet of torque. You can also opt for the 3.6 liter Pentastar, and both engine options are available with Ram's hybrid e torque system. Regardless of your engine choice, you get a very smooth shifting 8-speed automatic transmission to deliver that power to the road. The question remains, how does it perform off-road in real-world conditions? Perry Mack here and today we're going to take the Ram Rebel and the Ram Power Wagon off-road. How was it? The Rebel impressively wound up narrow, steep mountainsides of loose dirt and gravel on a trail solely used by advanced ATVers in summer and advanced snowmobilers in winter. Four low with the rear diff locked worked flawlessly. There were plenty of tight hairpin turns where we unlocked the rear diff to take advantage of the 23.1 foot turning radius. And actually the turning radius on for a light duty truck is pretty good. I noticed that too because some of these corners are pretty tight through here. And yep. yeah, for a half ton truck it turns pretty tight, yep. especially in four low. Which is by the way better than the Chevy or Ford half ton crew cab models. This off-road trim isn't designed to compete with the Ford Raptor, whose suspension is incredible at ripping across the desert, but tends to float down the highway with the extra travel and softer suspension. Instead, the Rebel competes head-to-head -head with the Tundra TRD Pro, Chevy's Trail Boss, GMC's AT4, the Nissan Titan Pro 4X, and Ford's FX4 off-road package. And as impressed as we were with those trim levels, the Rebel outshines them all. Now we attribute most of this enhanced drivability to the dampeners and the air springs. The air springs take you up to a lofty 10.8 inches of ground clearance and let you traverse rocky, washboard and gravel roads easily. The only thing it doesn't have, I shouldn't say the only thing it doesn't have, but what would have been nice is a front locking diff, but um, the electronic sway bar disconnect, that would have been handy for an off-road yeah. truck. Does this Does have not... a front facing camera? Uh, Rebel, no. Here. It's kind of the three things. Yeah, I don't know why they didn't spend the money. Climbing steep, sandy grades was effortless with a 2.64 to 1 low range gearing. But we also have to give credit to the 3.92 axle ratio and 32 inch all terrain tires. Terrain angles are respectable at 26.7 approach, 21.8 breakover, and 23.8 departure. And with shorter aftermarket tailpipes, you could easily improve this departure angle. Our test truck had the optional 12 inch screen, which is stunning. Crisp, sharp, fast and easy to use, along with an intuitive arrangement of manual switches. The switches engage or disengage, tow haul mode, front and rear parking sensor warnings, traction control and adjust your trailer brake control and raise and lower the optional four corner suspension. Now initially I thought switches for the parking sensor controls were a waste of space, 
until the trail got so tight we were pinstriping the sides of the truck. The parking sensor warnings were beeping as if someone had a missile lock on us. Without taking our eyes off the road, we hit the switches and were blessed with silence. The interior is refined and there were no creaks or squeaks as we worked our way up and down the Callahan Valley. The two options we would indulge ourselves in that are not available in some of the other manufacturers' trucks are that 12-inch Uconnect screen and the dual-pane panoramic sunroof. Let's briefly talk about the form of the new Ram Rebel. We think the styling is terrific. With a vented hood, blackened fender flares, and the mustache grill, it also gets its own 18-inch aluminum wheels, and now with the 32-inch Goodyear Wrangler Duratrac AT tires. We didn't think we'd like the red accent interior, but we were wrong, it felt great. Now most progressive buyers choose the innovative e-torque hybrid system, which is mated to the proven 3.6 liter V6 Pentastar in the standard configuration, with an option to bump up to the V8 Hemi. The e-torque adds up to an additional 90 pound-feet of torque to the V6 and 130 pound-feet to the V8 through the power curve, but not to the max torque numbers which really is too bad. You can also get it with the new 3rd gen 3 liter V6 turbo diesel cranking out an impressive 480 pound-feet of torque. Towing capacity for the Rebel in the most popular configuration, which is non-e-torque, a V8 Hemi, crew cab, 5.7 box, 4-wheel drive, and the trailer tow package is 11,340 pounds. And the payload can be up to 1,850 pounds. But these numbers can change dramatically depending on the options you choose. So we've included a link below with some of the other configurations. Now if you're out shopping for any truck, check the door label and the owner's manual to get accurate payload numbers. They could be half of the max payload promoted by a manufacturer. I've also included a link to a great article on real world payload numbers below. Now what's your take on the Rebel? Compared to the Ram 1500, are you willing to give up some towing and payload numbers to get better off-road performance? And what about the styling? Do you love it? Do you hate it? Or maybe you don't care as long as the truck does the job? Please let us know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, smash that like button. And if you want to see more, please subscribe. And ring that bell so you're the first to know when a new video comes out. Until next time, play safe and we'll see you on the trails.